terms of like uh, like pictorial perspective or in this case like linear perspective but um, so yeah you see the lines kind of co converging going this way and there's a vanishing point over here but then you also see them moving this way and there's another vanishing point over here um, so this work is a lot later but um, still kind of employing those same um, principles because much like in the Renaissance, um, like Kaye Boat was a realist, so he was also interested in like, how do we make things look like they really do? How do we make things yeah. look like they look? You can feel the rain in this picture, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this one actually illustrates those vanishing points. Um, and that's something that we'll kind of do in practice, but we're not gonna get like super complicated with the subject matter, we're gonna start pretty simple. Um, these are some pictures of, I just have a few pictures. So this one again is what kind? Is it one point? Is it two point? One, I see jail mouthing one, yeah. yeah. So yeah, you're right. Um, and um, so we can imagine there's like a dot here, that's our vanishing point. And we have like linear perspective, we, so we have all these drawn and implied lines that converge at that vanishing point. So those definitions I hope are starting to make like a lot more sense that you can see them. Um, and I wanted to show this one because like your vanishing point doesn't have to be right in the center. Um, a lot of like Renaissance art is very like centered whereas like a lot of like later work tends to be maybe more off center. It's like a compositional device that's a little bit more interesting but it's also the idea in the Renaissance, that they liked everything to look really orderly and sturdy. Um, but yeah, so in this one, we've got it again, right in the right in the middle of the drawing. Um, but it could also be, yeah, off to the side. Um, or sometimes you can't actually even see the vanishing point in the picture. It's like, say you took a picture on the side of a highway and all of the lines are like going off of the page, for instance. Um, I don't know. If, yeah, I do have a picture of that. So like, yeah, the vanishing point isn't necessarily, or it's right at the edge of this picture. Um, so yeah. And this one is sort of an illustration of horizon lines. Let me just move that for a minute. Um, it doesn't always have, so if you're looking at this, you could imagine it, um, being like buildings that you're looking at from above. So it doesn't actually have to be like the horizon, that's your horizon line, um, but it's sort of like a line on which that vanishing point will sit. Um, so in this case, you can see the lines coming from both the top and the bottom that all kind of converge at that point. Um, and is that the end? I think that's the end of my slideshow. So we are gonna practice some of that stuff. So. So the first thing I thought we would do, and I guess maybe I should have mentioned this at the beginning, but in terms of media for this workshop, all you really need is a pencil and a piece of paper. I have a mechanical pencil and a piece of paper. Um, and I'm using like literally like a picture of my family as like the ruler, because I don't have a ruler. But if you have a ruler, it's helpful, or anything with like a straight edge, you could use like a book. Um, so what we're doing to start off is like on your piece of paper, um, just draw a line across it. It doesn't have to be right in the center. You could do it, you could do it this way if you want, more like portrait, or you could do it landscape. Um, but yeah, just draw a nice straight line across the center. If you don't have anything that works as a ruler, it's not, not a huge deal either. I love how and I'm, low cost and simple the materials are that you're you've been using every time because it's like I even have this stuff and I'm not an artist so that's good yeah I, that was sort of like something CC had asked to keep in mind so but also I didn't want to go to the dollar store either to buy stuff so I didn't think other people would want to go buy stuff exactly right yeah I've been avoiding going out like the plague. <laughs> My, um, so yeah, if everybody is like got this part done, let me know. Um, you don't have to follow along if you don't want to, of course, but um, yeah, so I've got my line. And then the next step is just to put a point on it somewhere, wherever you want your vanishing point to be. I'm probably gonna put mine in the middle, or middle-ish, but like we said, it doesn't have to. 
I'm going to finish eating and then I'll play catch up. <laughs> totally. So this is what we're doing like to start. And this sort of is a combination of like the last workshop when we did some uh, three dimensional objects, but if you didn't do that, it's no problem. Um, so obviously you're not just going to draw these, or I guess that's not necessarily obvious, but we're not just going to draw these shapes on right away. Um, what I would do is I just drew like little squares at different points in different spots in the drawing so that we could kind of practice drawing those leading lines towards the vanishing point. So if you've got your horizontal line or your horizon line and you've got your vanishing point, mine's like hard to see. Um, then the next thing is just to draw some shapes. I find, um, blah. I find that, um, blah, why is my brain not working? Cubes or squares, that's the word I was looking for. Um, I find squares are like the easiest to do, but if you want to get crafty and try something else, I'm not going to say don't draw like a circle or a triangle or something like that. Um, now that I said that, I want to try that. Sorry, I have a question. So yeah. are we, sorry, I put my hand up. I like do this. It's just like oh, a freaking habit, like my whole life. Um, yeah. But do I, are we drawing 3D squares or... Well, yeah, they are going to look 3D, but um, first, no, yeah, first just draw like a flat square, sorry. That I see your, I understand your question. Leave yeah, just a flat, line. just a square square, and then so we'll do that. On top of my line. It could be on top of your line, or it could be anywhere. Let me just show a quick example, and then I'll clean them up later. I was but. immediately thinking of drawing trees. I don't know if that's too far off. <laughs> Well, we were we're gonna do that on the next part of this. This won't take very okay, long. Cool. But yeah, so see, Pasha, how I just have like a couple squares. Really, anywhere on there will be fine. So they could be on the line, um, or they could be somewhere else. I'm gonna like try and not take my own advice, and I'm gonna draw a circle now because I'm like, I wonder how that will work. I'll trace my cup. I'm experimenting though, so it might, I might crash and burn, I don't know. <laughs> Did anyone else, because I kind of, I know I talk fast, or like I wasn't super paying attention to everyone. Does anybody else have any like questions while we're doing this part? We're good? Cool. Um, I'm going to do a triangle too, because like, why not? <laughs> This is gonna kind of look, I think, a little bit vapor wavy, if anyone knows what that is. Um, it's not gonna really look like something necessarily from real life, because you don't usually have a bunch of like squares in the sky, um, or triangles that you see. Okay. So I've got some objects down, or some shapes, I guess, um, just, to throw in a little bit of like terminology when you have like um just like shapes like this that look kind of flat they're shapes and once you make them look a little bit more 3d or if you have them like in real life we tend to call them forms so shapes are 2d and forms are 3d um so i've got these things everybody got some cool cool Nice. JL, that is complicated, but I love it. Um, so now the next step is to use whatever you're using as a ruler. I got my family picture here. Um, and go to like the points, uh, like the edges that are closest to the vanishing point. So in this case, I'm going to start with a square because it's easier. Um, and I'm going to start with like this point here. And I'm going to use my ruler to connect that line to that line or that dot, I guess, to that dot with a line. So I'll show you what that looks like if you're like, what is she talking about? Okay, so just like that, pretty easy peasy. I'm not gonna do the same thing with that top point. We're not gonna do it with say this point, or we are gonna do it with that point. So just this one and this one, but not any, not this other one. Show you what that looks like if you're like what? I have a question. Sure, yeah. 
So my, my point is over here, would I come this way or am I only going this way? Sorry, but sure, show me where your point is again. So the point is right here. Would I go this way and this way? Yep, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, so I've got that so far. Um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do it to my triangle. Um, it is a little trickier with, I know some of us have the um, circles. So I'm going to, I'm going to pick a point um, kind of, I, I might use the ruler to kind of connect a point. It's a little easier to find a corner, right, on a sphere. That's what I'm trying to say. So I'm going to kind of point, pick right there and right there. Um, but you can kind of experiment if it lo looks really wonky. So now I've got this happening. GL, I want to see yours because it looks like tricky, but it looks like it's going to look so cool when it's done with all of those different rectangles. Feel free to show yours at any point too if you want, but don't feel pressured either. I think it's going to be multi dimensional. Nice. And also don't feel like embarrassed if you like maybe drew a line in the wrong spot and you're like, what happened here? What went wrong? Because that happens too. And just let us know. We can try and help. Or maybe you do it and it like is not what you meant to do, but it'll look really cool, in which case share with us too. Oops. Katie, can you show us yours again? Yep. I'm just, yeah, I'm just going on. So you have some circles too. So I, I just kind of put my ruler there and trying to find like where it connected with them, um, with my circle. And I'm not done this uh, triangle yet, but I have all the other ones kind of done. And you can kind of see how it looks like they're, you know, receding in space towards a vanishing point. Um, and you could just leave it like that if you like it and color it in. Um, but I'm going to try, I'm going to show one other thing too, where you erase parts of the lines and sort of close off the objects to make it look like, um, yeah, a rectangular prism or, or a cylinder or things like that. So once everyone's done drawing all their lines from their vanishing point to the corners of their objects, let me know. Sorry. I do that at least once a workshop, one like loud smash. I'm glad none of you have earphones on. Yeah, I'm not doing the earphone thing. Usually I do. That's good. So if you're done that and you like it, then you're done. But if you wanted to try one other thing, I'm going to, um, I think this part is pretty easy because next, if you wanted to close this off and make this a, a cube, you really just need to draw a line that's like parallel with the paper. So a vertical line that's just straight down. And then if you want to close it off on the bottom, you would draw a line that's parallel uh, with the horizon line. So I'm doing it like really rough right now and then I'll clean it up. And then you would erase these lines here. Yeah. So I will do that and I'll check back in in one minute. I screwed up my triangle and I'm using pen, so. Oh. Does it look kind of cool? I think I'm just done with this one now. That's cool. Yeah. Just go with it. There are no mistakes, remember? Yes. Exactly. For a second, I thought that, but but this in this case, I really did. It's like not fixable. <laughs> I'm like looking around. I'm like at my makeup desk. I'm like, what can I make as like white paste to make a whiteout right now? But I don't. It's not. That's like so creative though. <laughs>
<laughs> I've only done one shape so far because I was catching up with you guys. So it's okay. <laughs> so um, I actually didn't use my ruler, and this bottom line is not super perfect, but I kind of get the idea there. I'm gonna. I am using a pencil, so I can erase, not to like, not to brag or anything. <laughs> um, but. Yeah, I'll just uh, erase that and fix that up. And yeah, so I've got like that um, triangle. And for so for the cylinder, be it would be actually about making a, a curve instead of a line. So try and kind of mimic that same shape, that same arch of the curve, um, maybe around there. I've been uh, quoting Bob Ross, though, just so everyone knows. Check out Bob Ross. He's on Netflix, I think. Yeah. I never, I am like, I feel like I'm like that one artist that, like, never got into Bob Ross. I don't have any, like, beef with him. He's, like, super nice, happy guy, but I never really watched his shows. I have to check it out, though. It's, like, so... Uh, beef with Bob Ross. That's so funny. <laughs> he's, like, the nicest, it seems like he's, like, the nicest, happiest man. Katie. Hey, yeah. I kind of effed up because my line is over here and this giant square is just like blocking everything. That's, I mean, that's okay. It's, uh, it, it may be if you add like another square on the bottom somewhere, you could, but I, it is like, you got the right idea. It's just that one, um, that one circle is still missing the, the side, but you're, you're doing it right. Maybe I can make the square smaller. You could, yeah, you could totally. If you have a pencil and you can erase, then yeah, why not? Mm. Actually, Bob Ross, I think that's, I think Taylor and I have a bond over Bob Ross because I'm pretty sure we watched it together when I was in the Sioux one time. I love that. <laughs> I think it was at the Toronto uh, gathering. I was in Toronto. Oh, yeah. right. Okay. My memory is horrible. Imagine having a beef with Bob Ross, though, what that might look like, that diss track. I know, I was like, how are you two besties, but you're not both into Bob Ross? Only one of you is. I don't, I don't know, yeah, I don't know. We do have some different tastes. So we were talking about movies last night, and we were, like, not on the same page. Oh, yeah, you guys are, like, the yin and yang twins of, of um, <laughs> besties. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Yang <laughs> that could be our collective name. Oh my god, I'm about it. I'm just kidding for sure. That is like not uh, oh. not my culture. So, um, but yeah. <laughs> so I got this, and I think that's fine. Like that's what I'm gonna leave it as, just so we have time to do the next um part of things. Sweet gel, that looks awesome. Nice. That's perfect. That's actually the perfect coach. I love that. Um, so yeah, that is one way of doing um, linear perspective or one point perspective. But that is like with kind of like imagined shapes um, or not necessarily like super something you would see in real life. So the next thing that we're going to do is um, kind of trying to mimic something that you might actually see or something that looks a little bit more, I don't know real but I guess it's still very illustrative we're not looking at something and then drawing it um but yeah so we're gonna do I think you can s sort of see it we're gonna do the same thing to start where we're gonna make a horizon line right I just flipped my paper over so if that's an option you could totally do that um and then put a point anywhere so it could be right in the middle in this case I did mine off to the side a little bit um, and I know I have some extra done, but just, yeah, just start with your line right across the page and then plot your um, point on it. And Sarah, this will be a perfect one for doing the trees. So to start the new one, all you need is, um, yeah, a line across the page somewhere and to plot out your one point. If you want to be, like, extra, you can totally do two points. Um, I always want to be extra. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it. <laughs> okay, right on. And okay, so something you could do if you're like feeling a little stunted for inspiration is you could e you could totally go on um, like go on Google if you want and like look up 
um, two point perspective if you want to like follow along with the drawing kind of Bob Ross style. So I did this one like horizontal. Um, and I think I'm going to do like train tracks or something. But my other one I did. Um, so the next the next step is basically draw some points or draw some lines rather that start there and kind of move forward but it would be good to have like an idea in mind so if you want this to be like a forest path and have like some bigger trees here um and then the trees will sort of slowly get smaller so that's something else that besides just these lines um, another thing that you can do to imply like perspective, like proportionally get smaller in scale as they move back in space. So like when you're looking out your window, the trees that are closer to you, even sometimes if they're like physically smaller, look bigger than the trees that are further away. So that's um, sort of the principle that we're going to try and do here. So in this one, I have like, I started, I drew these two lines. Um, that was like the first thing I did. And then I actually drew some lines a little bit beside them to, um, so again, using my ruler from the vanishing point and then kind of getting it, letting it get gradually bigger. And I thought, okay, that's gonna be like the sidewalk. But then you also don't wanna just um, draw lines along the sidewalk um, that are like the same distance apart from each other. So you'll see that they're like, there's a bigger gap between them that when they're closer up and then that slowly that gap gets smaller as they go back into this implied space and the same with i don't know what these are i don't know like fence, fence posts because they're not really tall enough to be telephone poles um but i did this sort of the same thing here so the space between them when they're up close is larger and then as they get further back they get smaller so sarah if you wanted to do trees you could do like a big a bigger tree here and maybe it's like a highway that's lined with trees and the trees could um, get smaller and then if there's like a tree line you might also notice that that tree line becomes sort of an implied line that leads towards your vanishing point right so the trees that are way back here they're going to be quite small I'm, I'm going to do that because why not so i started doing like trees on the highway and my spacing is definitely not like mathematically perfect like we didn't talk about that but um, Pierogino and Raphael, like there's like some serious math going on there and they're like pretty darn like perfect. Um, whereas these are kind of just like, you can see that the spacing between the trees is definitely not exact and like same with like um, the, the sidewalk here. It's, it's not perfect, but it's more about implying um, a sense of depth than in, in my case, um, then sort of like a, like a really, really precise kind of equation based thing. I don't even really know how to do that. Um, although I'm certain that's Googleable as well. So I was just, um, I just started with like drawing the tree trunks and you can see they sort of like get smaller and shorter as they move back in space. And I'm just gonna maybe fill them in with some like lines to make them look kind of like pine trees or something. Um, but yeah, that's sort of, that's where I'm at and you can um yeah you can fill this in however you want you could put clouds in the sky um maybe you can practice that with the clouds maybe if they're like closer to the vanishing point they might be a little smaller um but I mean the sky is quite far away too so you don't have to always obey those rules I think the sense of depth is still like implied just by this linear perspective that we have going on 